This is Dr. Lamb. The endocrine system is made up of eight different glands located strategically throughout the body. Each of these glands releases numerous hormones that has far-ranging effects systematically uh, throughout the body's organ function. In addition, each of these organs are tied together by various axes. We have, for example, the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, or the HPA axis that ultimately governs how the adrenal function. There is also an axis called the ovarian adrenal thyroid axis, which is seldom uh, paid attention to, uh, but it is a critical axis for uh, that has to be functioning very well. What what happens uh, in these three glands as we look a little closer is that when you have a disease state of each of these glands, conventional medicine usually picks it up. For example, if you are having a, a problem uh, with uh, adrenal dysfunction, then if it is severe enough, it will be classified as a Addison's disease. Uh, if it is too low cortisol or if it's too high, it will be Cushing's disease. Same thing with thyroid. If your thyroids are not working well, it could be uh, uh, classified and diagnosed as hypothyroidism. Ovarian problem can manifest itself in extreme states as uh, estrogen-related uh, type of cancer. Now, what happens if uh, a person has these uh, systems in the body that is not quite at the disease state, but yet is still bothersome? In other words, they are in a subclinical state. Symptomatically, uh, they are very, very uh, in trouble, but clinically, uh, they don't fit the diagnosis criteria of conventional medicine. This subclinical state of uh, dysfunction uh, needs to be addressed. Let's look at the closed state first as the uh, adrenal system. Uh, you know, it, uh, for a person who is exposed to physical stress, emotional stress, uh, the subclinical state is called adrenal fatigue. This is a person that does not fit into the diagnosis of Addison's disease, but is symptomatic. They are quite uh, mild relative to Addison's disease. Uh, causes can be uh, physical, emotional stress, uh, toxic relationships, infections, uh, over-exercise, high sugar diet, lack of sleep, or overwork. Uh, what are the symptoms? They include fatigue, anxiety, weight gain, salt, craving, hypoglycemia, insomnia, joint pain, palpitations, and adrenaline rushes. Adrenaline, uh, adrenal fatigue can actually be divided into four stages uh, clinically, uh, starting with stage one, which is alarm reaction, going into stage two with resistance response where the body tries to put up more cortisol. Stage three, when the body, when the adrenal is in exhaustion, as the cortisol level start to go down, uh, it's divided to phase A through D with three B, stage three B phase uh, as ha having the hallmark of the old axis imbalance. And when you, after you reach the stage four with adrenal failure, then progressively it gets worse into Addison's disease. So you have causes and symptoms of adrenal fatigue that we have just covered. Now, as far as the ovaries are concerned, what do you get? Uh, you know, ovarian dysfunction can be caused by stress, can be caused by environmental factor, uh, taking hormone replacement medically, uh, sugar, uh, obesity. Uh, these causes a imbalance of sugar, uh, of estrogen versus progesterone. We need to remember in the ovaries, it's not only the absolute value of the estrogen level, but it's the balance between estrogen and progesterone that's important. When the body, and in particular the ovaries, are under stress, usually the end result is high estrogen relative to progesterone. Because progesterone tends to neutralize estrogen, and when the neutralization effect is not there, then even though the estrogen level in absolute terms is not high, in relative terms it becomes dominant, and the subclinical state of what we see is called estrogen dominance. The symptoms include PMS, foggy thinking, irregular menses, breast tenderness, PCOS, no spark in life, and in, in extreme cases, fibroid, endometriosis, as well as uh, cancer, especially bre breast cancer of estrogen origin. Now let's look at the thyroid. The thyroid uh, gland usually is responsible for the metabolic functions of the body. And, uh, it, you know, and uh, those people who have a primary hypothyroid or hypothyroid caused by uh, other issues such as infections or autoimmune diseases can have symptoms such as low body, uh, 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 low body temperature, sluggishness, weight gain, hair loss, constipation, high cholesterol, and dry skin. And if you give uh, thyroid medication, these symptoms should go away, except uh, probably a low body temperature. If the low body temperature remains low for a consistent period of time and the symptoms does not seem to go away and require more medication, then we have to start thinking that maybe the hypothyroidism is caused by something else of what we call secondary hypothyroidism. 
Now, in the in the case of adrenal fatigue in the ovarian axis, we're dealing with three subclinical states, starting with adrenal, which is adrenal fatigue, the ovaries, which is estrogen dominance, and in, in the hypothyroid, it'd be subclinical hypothyroid. The uh, presentation is convoluted because the, the symptoms are so overwhelming. Now, let's, let's look at the interconnection. When the uh, adrenal is weak, the progesterone is low. When the progesterone is low, it fails to oppose the estrogen in the ovaries, and therefore, we talked about before, you have estrogen dominance, which is exaggerated. On top of that, high estrogen increases the level of cortisol binding globulin and bounds up the cortisol, therefore making less cortisol available. Therefore, it contributes to a reduced level of cortisol in the adrenal gland. So it goes backwards. On top of that, high estrogen also contribute to a phenomenon called organ resistance in the adrenal glands, where the adrenal glands becomes less responsive and blunted to the response of control from the hypothalamus. At the same time, if you look at the adrenals, a low cortisol, which is characteristics of the, of the stage three and beyond, uh, causes a, a contribute to an organ resistance in the ovary, as well as a thyroid, both. So the, both thyroid and the ovaries are going to be more resistant to hormonal response. And on, on top of that, the adrenal fatigue lead to a, a low free T3, a low free T4, although clinically it can be normal. And that is a, a problem. The adrenal, when the adrenal is in fatigue, the thyroid binding globulin goes up. They are metabolically linked. So when the thyroid binding globulin goes up, the, the thyroid are bounded and therefore the amount release is reduced. So therefore it contributes to a lower thyroid function. Now on top of that, the low uh, free T3 and the lower free T4 can also affect the uh, sexual hormone binding globulin as well as GnRH and prolactin and that affects the ovaries. And that's why many people with hypothyroidism will find that their period may be missing and very difficult to get pregnant. On top of that, furthermore, the low thyroid hormones can contribute to a lower level of progesterone, which then also swings around and uh, increase the uh, estrogen dominance. So you can see uh, all these three glands, the ovarian, adrenal, and thyroid, are all intertwined, you see. And if one uh, is not well balanced, it's almost impossible to get, get the balance. It's like three angles of a triangle or three legs of a stool. Now, if you look at this uh, diagram, you can see quite evidently that the cortisol is really the key and that the adrenal is where the main control is. So the good news is if you can able to normalize the adrenal function and the cortisol level goes up, then the organ resistance of the ovaries and the thyroid will be reduced. The thyroid hormone will come up because uh, the thyroid binding globulin will then go back down. Similarly, when the adrenals are normalized, the progesterone will go up and when that happens, the estrogen is being opposed more appropriately and the estrogen dominant symptoms normally uh, can be reduced. So by normalizing the adrenal function, the estrogen dominance in the ovarian system will go down and the secondary hypothyroidism symptoms will also tend to improve. So the key is to work on the adrenals. If you don't do that and you're working on the other systems without fixing the adrenals first, then it's oftentimes a, a, a strategy that is fruitile and often times can fail. So if you have uh, symptoms suggestive of hypothyroidism, uh, uh, such as uh, dry skin, uh, sluggishness, uh, as well as uh, PMS and, and uh, endometriosis, breast tenderness, and then also of adrenal uh, fatigue, such as uh, 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 sugar imbalances, uh, obesity, uh, and salt craving, and you have all these symptoms and no one can figure out for you what is going on, you may want to consider the uh, old excess imbalance as one of the causes. I hope this brief introduction has been helpful. Uh, this entire article can be available to you free at no charge if you go to my website, Dr. Lam, that's www.drlam.com and look for the article called Oak Axis Imbalance, Ovarian Adrenal Thyroid Axis Imbalance.